What then is the key to understanding the Constitution? The Constitution is meant to control the government, just like laws are meant to control the people. I suspect that many of you are contemplating this message for the first time, or at least mentally asking the question. If the key to understanding the Constitution is so simple, how come no one else has thought of it? My answer to this is, many have. Although the usurpers of power and control find this concept to be contrary to their designs, true patriots have recognized this fact from the beginning. Let's quote some of them, starting with Patrick Henry. The Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government. Even in the early years of the American Republic, patriots could see that government officials were ignoring or misinterpreting the Constitution in laws that were established. The Alien and Sedition Acts were examples of the federal government straying from the Constitution. Patriots such as Thomas Jefferson could not remain silent and acquiesce to such activity on part of their elected officials and therefore protested in the form of acts by the state legislatures, such as the Kentucky Resolution, some of which follows. It would be a dangerous delusion were a confidence in the men of our choice to silence our fears for the safety of our rights. That confidence is everywhere the parent of despotism. Free government is founded in jealousy and not in confidence. It is jealousy and not confidence which prescribes limited constitutions to bind down those whom we are obliged to trust with power. That our constitution has accordingly fixed the limits to which, and no further, our confidence may go. In questions of power, then, let no more be heard of confidence in man, but bind him down from mischief by the chains of the Constitution. Ayn Rand came to the United States from Soviet Russia and therefore has had first-hand experience living under communism as well as living under freedom. This quote from her essay, Man's Rights, one of the essays compiled in her book, The Virtue of Selfishness, demonstrates her understanding of the purpose of the United States Constitution. The government was set to protect man from criminals, and the Constitution was written to protect man from the government. Ayn Rand expounds more on the limited purpose of the Constitution in her essay, The Nature of Government, also found in her book, The Virtue of Selfishness. She certainly understood the key. Today, when a concerted effort is made to obliterate this point, it cannot be repeated too often that the Constitution is a limitation on the government, not on private individuals. That it does not prescribe the conduct of private individuals, only the conduct of the government that it is not a charter for government power, but a charter of the citizens' protection against the government. Joseph Smith, Jr., who lived from 1805 to 1844, was the founder and original president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, commonly known as the Mormon Church. Somewhat less known is the fact that Joseph Smith also ran for president of the United States, this quote shows that he also understood this key. The Constitution is not law to us, but it makes provisions for us whereby we can make laws. Where it provides that no one shall be hindered from worshiping God according to his own conscience is a law. No legislature can enact a law to prohibit it. The Constitution provides to regulate bodies of men and not individuals. David W. New, a friend of ours who is an attorney, wrote this book, The Constitution for Beginners. In this book, he explains the purpose of the Constitution in the following words. The most important purpose of the United States Constitution is to confine limit, restrict, and control the powers of the federal government. 
the intent of the Constitution was to control the government, to limit the government's conduct, not the individual citizen. James Madison, known as the father of the Constitution, in writing Federalist Number 51, describes the need to first enable the government to control the governed and in the next place oblige it to control itself. Let's review a paragraph of Federalist 51 to hear his words on the need to keep government under control of the Constitution. But the great security against a gradual concentration of the several powers in the same department consists in giving to those who administer each department the necessary constitutional means and personal motives to resist encroachments of the others. The provision for defense must in this, as in all other cases, be made commensurate to the danger of attack. Ambition must be made to counteract ambition. The interest of the man must be connected with the constitutional rights of the place. It may be a reflection on human nature that such devices should be necessary to control the abuses of government, but what is government itself but the greatest of all reflections on human nature? If men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern men, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. In framing a government which is to be administered by men over men, the great difficulty lies in this. You must first enable the government to control the governed, and in the next place oblige it to control itself. A dependence on the people is no doubt the primary control on the government, but experience has taught mankind the necessity of auxiliary precautions. Dr. W. Cleon Skousen describes this control over the government in these words in his Principles of Liberty, number 13. A constitution should be structured to permanently protect the people from the human frailties of their rulers.